Okay, we're gonna do lesson 10-4, which is dealing with factors and products. Okay, we know a factor times a factor equals a product, okay? Today we're gonna to deal with one of these factors is going to be a multiple of 10, just today, not all. I mean, six times seven, neither one of them is a multiple of factor, but six times 70, one of them is a, is a multiple of 10, okay? So let's take a look at our sheet here. Factors are the numbers that are multiplied together to give a product. This multiplication table shows that five times 30 is equal to 150. So the factors are five and 30, and the product is 150, okay? So one factor is always a multiple by, of 10. In this situation, not always in life, but in this problem right here, in this little world, one of the factors is a multiple of 10. Multiply by the digit in the tens place, this is this one, right? And then write a zero afterwards. Okay, so seven times three, write what seven times three is. Should be 21, and then bring a zero over. I want you to pause and I want you to answer these three. Okay, should get 160. 240 and 90. So now they want us to fill in the table. Okay, nine times 10 is 90. Seven times 30 is 210. Eight times 20 is 160. And eight times 30 is 240. Okay, so if we look at this, we have 70, 140, 210, these are multiples of, of seven. So seven times one, seven times two is 14, seven times three, which makes sense because it's seven times 10, seven times 20, seven times 30, times one, times two, times three. These are multiples of eight, eight, 16, 24. Well, you have eight times one, eight times two, eight times three with zero after it. Same with the nine. Nine times one is nine, nine times two is 18. Nine times three is 30, we're just putting a zero after it. All right, let's take a look here. Complete the table. Think about the patterns or property you know by multiplying by 10. All right, well, we have two times 10 is 20. Two times 20 is 40. Two times 30. Well, two times three is six with the zero. Okay, see if you can fill in the rest of these. Two times 40, two times 50, two times 60, two times 70, two times 80, two times 90, and then the same here, three times 20. Three times 30, three times 50. Okay, pause it and fill that in. Okay, you should have 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, and 180. 30, 60, 90. Okay, as you move down the columns, okay, if you're looking at this, 20 to 30, 40 to 60, 60 to 90, 80 to 120, 100 to 150, how you're going from down the columns. Each time the number increases by the value of the column, because this is multiplied by 10, so it goes up 10. It's multiplied by 20, so it's gonna go up 20, because you're moving from two to three. Two groups of 20, three groups of 20. Two groups of 30, three groups of 30. So it's just gonna multiply and increase by that. Okay, let's take a look at the bottom. Carla wants to make either five or six batches of cookies. She is choosing whether to use 40, 50, or 60 chocolate chips for each batch. Complete a table to show the total number of chocolate chips Carla will need for each choice. All right, so we're going to, we're gonna draw a big box around this, right? Okay, go ahead and draw that. Let me pause it and draw that for you. Okay, if you're not done, pause it and then come right back. Okay, 
she's either going to make five batches or six batches of cookies. And each time she's going to use 40 chocolate chips, 50 chocolate chips, or 60 chocolate chips. We don't need the rest of this over here, okay? So if she makes five batches of cookies and uses 40 chocolate chips, this is gonna tell us how many chocolate chips she needs. She makes five batches of cookies and needs 50 and uses 50 chocolate chips on each batch. This is gonna tell us how many chocolate chips she needs. Also, if she makes five batches of chocolate cookies, but she makes uses 60 chips, chocolate chips in each batch, this will tell us how many she needs. So fill this in, pause it, and come back. Okay, you should get 200, 250, 300, 240, 300. So that's gonna tell you how many chocolate chips you would need. Okay, good job.